everybody here we go it is showtime it is 9 a.m on the west coast and what is on the east coast one two three plus nine that's 10 11 12 too many numbers and i only have 10 fingers good morning everybody how are we doing this morning hopefully it's going to be a great day we've got a few things we're going to go through today but this is not day seven not day eight is Thursday, which means it is day nine. <clears throat> so here's the first test of today, because today is all about taking tests. First test of today. Let's see if we can't nail it with 19 of you. New age at onboarding class 23-016, otherwise known as 23 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> wow. Wow. <clears throat> that was pretty good, except I, I hadn't finished it. <laughs> Just like a comedian, we have to know our lines. We have to know about timing. All right, let's try one more time. New Agent Onboarding Class 23-16. How are we doing this morning? Doing good. Good morning. Good morning. I'm good doing great this morning. Okay, Will Hallam. Oh. What's up, Will? You didn't even unmute. You didn't even look up. It's like you're just totally not with it today. Is that right? I'm sick this morning, but uh, oh. I'm, with, I'm trying to be with it. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, I understand you're sick. Just put dash sick next to your name on the uh, on your Zoom profile. Do you know how to do that? Do I need to? Yeah, because then I won't call on you if you're sick. Because when people are sick, I don't want them to feel like I'm going to reach out to them. So it's up to you. You don't have to put sick on there, but I might call on you if you don't have that. Does that make sense? Hey, you, you, yeah, it makes sense. You can reach out, though. Okay, perfect. All right, everybody. So it is a long time. My gosh, Eric Byers. You know what, Eric? I've been, I've been giving a hard time about his hair, right? Because he works nights and he keeps doing all that. So now he just wears a hat. Forget it. I don't even gonna even try to do anything with my hair. And then Jason Duncan leans into the camera, and Jason doesn't even have any hair. <laughs> we just need to we need to comb our beards, right? That's what we got to do. All right, everybody. <clears throat> oh my gosh, let's start off. Did you guys see the meme I put up there? Let's ask Melissa Stevan. Melissa, did you see that meme I put up there? Yeah, about today versus or you know previous versus today. How we work nine to five and work any hours and yeah. I did. Can <laughs> I memorize it? <laughs> yeah, no worries. So there you go. In the past, it was a pretty straightforward corporate job, nine to five. We looked at inputs. We relied only on email. And we focused on knowledge. As a matter of fact, we hoarded knowledge because we didn't want other people to have an advantage on us, right? And now the future is, well, we can work anytime from anywhere. We're more interested in the outputs than we are in anything else. And we share information, right? It's a it's a totally different world now. We, we try to share a lot more than those people who rise up or typically can take all that information and know how to leverage it, right? Becomes knowledge and then knowledge when leveraged appropriately is actually wisdom. And that's what's happening to a lot of folks. Plus we focus on adaptive learning as opposed to, uh, what is it? Scripted corporate learning. So we're getting a little bit better, I think, in terms of how we're working together as, uh, population and hopefully this class will allow us to continue to do that as we move forward does anybody have any idea what the top earner made last year within ao anybody have any idea about a, about ten thousand dollars <laughs> no i'm just kidding obviously it's a, a little I, more uh, than i've heard so like, like go ahead I heard like uh, two hundred thousand. The one top uh, earned just a just slightly more um, than than that. Okay. Slightly more than a million. So we're getting closer, right? We're thinking about hmm, how much did our top earners make? So let me show you kind of what the future that you have potentially could look like. This is a graphic that tells us. The top 10 earners averaged 770,000 in 2019. Now the top 10 earners averaged $2.6 million. That's a lot. That's just crazy. That's we had, let's look this off. In 2019, we had eight people make over 500,000. Is that right? 
and now it's steadily doubled, doubled, and this hasn't doubled, but it went from 33 to 47. We have 47 people who made over $500,000. How many people, can I ask, like how many, this is Melissa, sorry. Uh-huh. How many people, um, how many people are there? So when you say 47 people, like what in perspective, how many agents are there like on? In AO, so I'll tell you, in AO, we have roughly about 2,000 agents of which 50% are producing. What I mean by that, they're working full time. So we have about 1,000 people. So what this is telling you is 47 people out of 1,000 have earned over $500,000, right? So 47 divided by 1,000 is equal to about 4.7%. Now. You look at it from that perspective, you're like, okay, well, 4.7%, I mean, 90, you know, 6%, but think about it. 4.7% of any organization will not make over $500,000. They, they just don't. And you don't need to come, you don't need to come to this job with all the pedigree. So as an example, in Silicon Valley, when I was running sales organizations, I wouldn't hire people who didn't have a degree or a master's degree or 10 years of sales background selling B2B or business to business, or if they couldn't show me their uh, W-2s where they made over $300,000 in a year, right? Because I would need them to back up with receipts, the fact they say they could sell all this stuff, right? I wouldn't do that. Yet here, we take people as evidenced by when you all introduced yourselves from every walk of life with every background, and it doesn't matter. The method, in my mind, is not necessarily foolproof, but it is certainly defensible. As long as you bring what to the table, the three things I always talk about, initiative, discipline, and coachability. If you bring those three things to the table with the system that we have, the fact you don't have to pay for leads, so you had to do everything. If you're in this job to make money, you certainly can do that. And I tell everybody, if you give me 10 years, that's all I ask. If you give me 10 years of doing this job and you get yourself promoted, you never have to work again a day in your life if you don't want to. Because the residuals or the renewals will pay for your lifestyle. So we have people that have done that. They worked 10 years. You know what they did? They retired. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. They leave. And invariably, you know what happens? They come back. They come back because they like the job, <clears throat> they like the additional money that it gives them, and now they don't need to worry about <clears throat> paying their bills because the renewals pay their bills. Now it's just them working to do whatever. Hey, I want to go to Europe for three months out of every year. That's what I want to do. Okay, you can do that. In a virtual environment, all of you are in different locations. You don't have to be in the location tomorrow. You can get on a plane today, fly to anywhere that has internet access in the world, plug back in, and you can work if you wish. All that sounds great. But if you move into leadership, you're getting an alternate streams of income, what they call passive income. That means people are working that are in your hierarchy and they're generating income for you. You don't, you don't have to be tied to your desk or tied to your home or wherever. So if you have a team of 10, you want to take, like Melissa did on her fake anniversary trip, right? You could go and do that. And you never have to pick up the phone, never do anything. We will continue to support you and your team, and your team will make money for the two weeks that you're out, and you're getting a check for that. The opportunity here is, in fact, truly unlimited. It's why I stick around, because I want to make sure all of you have the same opportunities that anyone else has that's worked here. And let me tell you, it, you can't look at a person and say, you know what? Amanda is going to be the one that's going to hit 500000 or Will or Heidi. You can't do it. You just don't know. It's all about what you're bringing to the table, your initiative, your discipline, and your coachability. So if you're here for the money... You just put in the time and the effort. You're going to make as much money as you want, literally. Got to move into leadership, in my opinion. You can still make a lot of money and not be in leadership, but it's just a lot of hard work, and it's only dependent on your activity. But once you're in leadership, it does give you the ability to build that passive income. Combine that with the way that the workforce is moving, 
this is the right time and the right place. How many industries are being affected by inflation, being affected by AI? There's a lot of stuff that's going on out there that's disrupting, to, the, the technology is disrupting <clears throat> these markets. However, this one is still a personal market. You still have to talk to someone, get them on a Zoom, show them the value proposition of what you have, and then they buy into it. So I just wanted to mention that because that thing came out and I was looking at it. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of people who made some pretty good money this past year. All right, Keaton Klinsky. Good morning, Clayton. Good afternoon, Clayton Clinton. I don't know your name. Keaton. Good Keaton, did you get a chance to work with your upline yesterday or your hierarchy? Um, <laughs> No, because uh, she had a funeral for her grand or, yeah, her grandma or mom that passed away. Who's so. your, your hierarchy? Um, So I work with Sal Sertino and he has me with Krista Baylog right now. Yeah, but there's more than just one person in that hierarchy, right? You got Walter, you got Sam, Sam Siegel, yeah. you got all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. You didn't work with any of them because one person was out? Yeah, correct. Well, yeah. So you do know you have access to all those people, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you want to work and work with them, you certainly can, okay? uh keaton yeah no yeah i said yeah okay so, I don't know. all right uh, so you didn't work with barbara wombacker did you do your script training yesterday yes i did oh my goodness it's like pulling teeth okay so what did you do um we were i was in the room with a couple of other people and you know we did the script training um I forget the person that we um, I was with. I forget his name. Evan LaBranch? I, I think so. You were the, in the class at the, um, you know, in the breakout room at the beginning. Um, and we just went over, you know, um, the script and what we were doing wrong, what we were doing right, what we need to improve on, things like that. Okay. Are you uh, ready? Or did they put you, did they dial release you? Are you close? What's going on? Um, they didn't say whether or not they'd uh, release me. He said I did well, you know, but he didn't say if I was going to be dial released or not. So if it was me, just so you're right, I, I would know. I would ask, well, like, hey, I, I want to make money, right? When, when can I make a call to make some money, <laughs> right? I mean, that's yeah. Where, yeah, okay. I'd find out today, but like, hey, whoever I'm with, right? What am I being right. released to make some money? Uh, Virginia Robertson, how about you? Did you work with your hierarchy yesterday? <clears throat> Excuse me. Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. Virginia. Virginia is yelling at me this whole time. And I can't <laughs> hear her. So <laughs> okay, there I was again. So it appears that my uh, upline is too busy. He he made some commitments and didn't answer them. So I told him I was frustrated. I wanted to get out of, I wanted to make money. And he said, oh, well, it's not in my control. And I said, well, we'll script test me and I'll prove it. It's just at night, I'm tired. Because out on the East Coast, we're doing testing at after eight o'clock. And he's like, okay, I'll test you. And then he didn't show up. So who is, who is your upline? Leo Pataka. Leo Pataka. 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 And that's fine. No, that's all right. Let's go. So some other people have Leo, right? Yeah. Uh, so um, Heidi does. Heidi. Who? Heidi. 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 Where's Heidi? Heidi, are you there? Yeah. Okay. You have Leo Pataka. Have Have you script? So when you say script test of Virginia, are you talking about the phone script or are you talking about the presentation script? The phone script. I'm just trying to, to be able to make phone calls. And I've been in yeah. for like three weeks now. And okay. I know, I, keep, I mean, I've got the thing memorized. I just <clears> think they're, I don't know what the deal is. I say just drop me in the water. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's ask. Let's be like, hey, what's going on? Hey, Leo, good morning. How are you? Or what is it over there? It's good afternoon, right? Yeah. 
Hey, I got a question. I'm well, man. Thanks so much. I have a question. Virginia Robertson and Heidi Sanchez, they want to be, uh, you know, dial release so they can start making money. But they were thinking they were going to test yesterday, so I'm confused. Did they test or not? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Are you going to meet with Virginia tonight? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And if you can do that, if you can do that for me, that's it. I mean, just, you know, meet with her and you guys figure out a plan, okay? You're awesome, Lou. <clears throat> well, I really, I really can't. So let me, because I've got a whole bunch of students here waiting for me. So let me give you a call back on break, okay? All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. <clears throat> All right, uh, Virginia, so he's going to meet with you tonight or I, when I say tonight I mean after this class and obviously with uh, the phone training he'll meet with you okay, okay. and then I need the same thing with you kind of see where you're at because it's been as you said a while so let's uh, let's see if we can't get you talking to people like on a phone call makes some money Niall Horton how about you uh, yes sir I did uh, we've been dialing for a while so <laughs> oh okay that's great are you about to be dial released I don't know. Uh, we just, they just, we've been dialing. So I don't <laughs> you're dial I'm sorry, you're dialing clients? Yeah. We've been okay. Dialing well, then for yeah, a while now. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Okay. So today's Thursday, right? So Niall, have you had an opportunity to schedule your presentation rubric? Uh, not yet. Uh, okay. Basically, so, I know I still needed some work because I missed like a couple of days. So yeah, no worries. And, and again, I don't have a demand that you have to have it done by Thursday of the second week, I just recommend it. So that way you are prepared and ready and they can get you some leads and you can actually conduct some, uh, you know, presentation with clients and make real money. Yeah. Right. But it's all up to you guys. You decide when that happens based on how well you do in the presentation and the phone and all the rest of that. Right. Millie, Millie, are the kids there, Millie. <laughs> no, just me today right now, actually. Just you. <laughs> okay. Millie, uh, did you work with your hierarchy yesterday? I did. Um, I got released two days ago. So yesterday was my first time on the phones. Mm -hmm. and That's awesome. I made, uh, yeah, I made like 150 calls and got like seven people and three on the spots. Whoa, look at you. Did any of those close? None of them closed, but Brian was able to get like 20 referrals from one of them. So it was still good. We have an so appointment with one tomorrow. One of them didn't close, but 20 referrals and the other guy just had like Zoom, couldn't do it. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, but still you're moving in the right direction, right? And hopefully some of those will start closing and you're in the Dushai hierarchy? Yeah. And Amanda was in there too, late night after I left as well. Ben. Yeah. I see the note here. She says you're not doing very well on the phone. So, <laughs> unfortunate. She was the <laughs> one late night getting them, but yeah, it was oh, good. Well, that's great. Thank you. Uh, Zakea, I made a few calls Wednesday and one closed yesterday. Really? Where's Zakea? Where are you at? I don't see you. I'm Say right something. here. I'm sorry. Like I said, I work from home too. Oh, yeah, that's right. My you bad. got that network thing going on. No, we, one of them closed. That's awesome. How much was it for? Um, uh, I think she said the premium was $153 a month. His okay, wife. Three times yeah. 12 is 1836 and they're going to pay you 12.5%. Right. So, how much are you going to yeah. get paid off that deal? Um, Christina and Dre didn't disclose to me, but they did say I'd be broke off. So, I'm sorry. Which I hierarchy are you in, Zakia? I'm with Haral, but he's nowhere around. He's on vacation. Sorry, you're with so you're with who? Haral, Haral. I think I'm saying his name correct. Haral or Harold? Is Haral. it E R A L D? Yeah. Harold. Harold. Yeah. So you're under the uh, 
Mario Hyro or yeah. uh, okay, so you, you have a different deal. So in Dushai, they pay out twelve and a half percent for anything that closes. In their deal, it's whatever you negotiate with the agent. But no, that was under that, that's my field trainer. But I was with that was under Christina's. Uh, so Drea is the field trainer, and Christina's her GA or M. So, yeah, yeah, I know, I know Dre. So should I call Dre and say how much are you getting paid since you don't know? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, right. I love it. See, that's what I want. I want people to be like, yeah, pay me. I did the work. Yeah. Oh, I'm calling the wrong person. That probably wouldn't be a good move. Dre Mulder. All right. Yep. I always think of Scully when I think of her. All right. Let's give her a call. Let's see if she's going to pay you. <clears throat> Plus, I want to see if she's available for something I need her to do today. Let's see what the answer is. Anybody answering the phone? You know, it's only 930 on the West Coast. There she is. Right. What's happening? How are you? Oh, can I see you in 34 minutes? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I, Sarah Desimone is going to join us. So it'll be the two of you. That would be at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, absolutely. I can pull you off early. I mean, I'll finish up early. That's fine. But I do have a question for you. I have an agent who says she sold a $5,000 deal and she wants to know when she's getting paid for it. Yeah, you don't remember her name is Zakaya? No, 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 no. She sold one earlier. Zakia. Zakia. Sorry, I used the wrong name. It's Zakia. You know Zakia, right? All right, so because in my class, anytime anybody sells anything for someone else, I'm like, okay, you know, you're worth a thousand dollars an hour. How much are you getting paid? And when they go, well, we're not sure, I go, okay, let's make a phone call. <clears throat> so, who sold that deal for her? You, Christina Salvatore. <clears throat> okay, so how much is she kicking down? Oh my god. Uh huh. Well, why? So it was Christina's lead. Is that what you're saying? Uh huh. Close. Yeah. Okay. Can we follow up with someone who uh, will give an idea of what Zakia will get paid? Yeah, it'd be cool if you came to the meeting and had a number. You look like a heroine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'll see you in 32 minutes, okay? Two, two, four, six, eight. That's the uh, code. No, that's the code to get in. All right, thanks. All right, bye. So she doesn't have an exact number yet because it's a little convoluted, but there is going to be something for you as a kid. I just can't tell you exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah, I scheduled one. Um, I also got somebody on the phone. I scheduled that for Wednesday of next week. So I'll be presenting that one, she said. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be the one that will get you paid, really paid if you close it, right? Show I'm so money. excited. Everyone's like making money now. It's great. All right, uh, Absham, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Yeah, I had a question. So in the survey, it says, uh, while watching presentations, I observed blank in ALP submitted by the agents. I didn't watch any presentations, but I was dialing. And I think two people closed uh, deals. So I don't know how much ALP that is. I don't know how much they closed it for. And then I got one that Dalton is going to have a meeting with someone today at 5, 5.30. So does okay. that... Right. Well, hold on, hold on. So I want to slow down to make sure I understand. So you're in Dalton's group and you've yeah. been dying. And you say you've had two appointments that you flipped over to an agent who sold both of them, correct? No, I had one yesterday. Okay, one. He... one yesterday. Yeah. And do you know who worked it? Uh, Dalton is going to work it today. At five five. Oh, okay. So, so you don't know how much it is until he sells it, right? If he yeah. sells it, okay. And then yeah. once he sells it, you know how much you're going to make out of it, correct? Yeah. Which is what? Twelve and a half percent. 
There you go. So as soon as that meeting's over, I would like, you know, if I'm you, I'm like, hey, Dalton, who closed it? Because maybe it's not him, but if it's him, that's great. Awesome. You closed it today. Today's Thursday, which means the cutoff for payout tomorrow is too late. So you're going to go till next Friday and you're going to be like, okay, pay me. Right? Okay. I love it. No, I think that's awesome. I, I'm really happy for all of you. And for the rest of you, you know, we I'm trying to advocate for you to get uh, dial release so you can start making phone calls under the douche hierarchy and every other hierarchy. We want you to do your presentation rubric and pass so that you can actually get your lead pack. Hey, so you Sam. Start. Sorry? It's Nile. <laughs> Sorry Niall, to interrupt. You me it's been two weeks. What? <laughs> For One you. of my leads is calling me back. Uh, is it cool if I call. take okay. the call? Absolutely. I do not want to get in the way of money. Okay. Never want to get in the way of money. All right. So uh, what do we have going on today? We have, we have people coming in that are going to talk with us. Isn't that awesome? I think it's awesome. They're going to share some time with us because what they're going to do is uh, hold on, what's going on in here they're going to answer your questions because let's face it one of my jobs is to facilitate both for you to learn something but also to keep you right the, we spent time energy effort to get you recruited get you in the door we don't want you to leave so as much as i feel i tell you the real deal i think you also look at me and you're like you're the guy in the white shirt with the white beard you're always going to say the right thing from the company's perspective right at least that's what i would think so what i've decided to do over the course of doing these for <clears throat> a long time is i have what we call a survival and success panel and what's beautiful about that is i facilitate the conversation but the questions are yours Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill out a job form and you give me your top two questions. I'm going to try to get to every question with the two people that are on the panel. You're not going to interact with them. And I would ask you that when we start, you meet yourself and you just listen. If you have a follow up question to any part of the discussion, put it in the chat, but only to me. OK, just direct to me. And the reason I do that is because everybody can see the chat. And sometimes some of these people, uh, when they're sitting on the panel, they can see the chat and they'll start talking and trying to answer a question. I might not be ready for them to answer it yet, or I might not want them to answer it because uh, reasons you guys don't need to know about. But I want to make sure we facilitate a great conversation. So I'm going to give you a job form in the chat. You're going to give me your top two questions that you would like answered. That can be anything that you want. When the panel starts, I will facilitate the conversation with them using your questions. I will navigate. You'll listen. And if at any time a discussion point causes you to have a follow-up question, just put it in the chat direct to me. Virginia, your hand had been raised. What can we do for you? It's embarrassing, but I figured it out. This, I didn't know how to do it directly to you, but you're the host, so I figured that out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I am the host. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, let me give you the uh, survival and success model. So hold on, let me find it. Boom, 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 boom. How come I don't see it? Oh, because it's at the very bottom. All right, let me do... Everybody, I, I'm assuming, has done the DRB. Is that correct? Everybody? Yeah. Everybody? Please uh, do the DRB. Okay. Hold on one second here. Yeah, questions. Let's go here. Let's publish the form. Now, I will give you some example questions. You do not have to use these, but I will give them to you. So just bear with me one second. All right. So there's the jot form. And now I will give you some examples because I want everyone to have a chance to ask a question. And you can ask whatever you want. I'll try to get to them all. But I have questions such as, how do you remember the script? Uh, what was your biggest accomplishment once you joined the organization? When did you make your first sale? How long did it take you to make your first sale? Did you read any books for self-help or sales or you know something like that? Uh, how long did you wait before quitting your previous job? Because some people still work in other jobs when they take this on and once they reach a certain uh, financial point, then they switch over full time. Uh, how can you make the most money? How much have you made since being released? Now, I don't know if they're going to give us the total numbers and what they made, but we can ask them some direct numbers about their comp and how they've done. Uh, who, what do you recommend people with different accents to get more appointments? What is your favorite part of working at AO? And I'll just throw all kinds of stuff out there. How do you attack leads? Why did you choose AO over having your own business? 
because uh, one of the ladies used to have her own business. Why is this doing this? Uh, how many presentations did you do before you felt confident? Yes, Abshan, what can I do for you? Uh, I have, I'm getting a call from a client. Can I pick it up? Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I want you guys to make your money. How do you like your job? What things would you change if you could? Uh, how did you overcome your fear and build your confidence? Are you confident? Is making 250 phone calls a day statistically feasible? Uh, you know, I can answer that question, but that's a good one for them. How many times have you cried because a client was mean to you during a phone call or a presentation? Okay. What advice would you give agents juggling multiple hats and how to get good results with minimum stress levels? How do you personally set up your appointments? How many licenses did you start off with and how many do you have now? What are the cons for working for this company? So you could ask them, hey, what's the downside? Because they'll give you the truth, right? And how many sits did you do with your upline before you first started? How long did it take for you to know when someone was an auto decline? What are the top three tips for an agent? Uh, how do you balance work life if you have a family? I mean, anything under the sun that you want to ask, I will try to get to. Amanda Ricola. Hi, Cola. What can I do for you? Um, so I did my first phone dials yesterday. And Congratulations. That's that awesome. room is nuts. Like, it's crazy. So... <laughs> I don't know. Like as far Maybe as the call, the call session room. Yes. Yeah. So like, the whole point there is not for you to hear them. It's yeah. really for us to hear you. So here's what I used to do in there. I would just mute. Not yeah, myself. Gonna... But mute them. Yeah. <laughs> Only when I got a phone call. So here I would have my finger and I'd be calling blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden somebody would answer. I hit mute. So no background noise. And then mm -hmm. I would talk. And they can hear me. And then when I was done, I would then unmute them so I could hear them. So yeah, it's very noisy, but that type of energy really is effective. You would be surprised. It is incredibly effective to get people going. I think it depends on your personality and if you like being on center stage or if not, <laughs> depending on how things go in a room. I had um, a question and then 10 people tried to respond at once and I had to actually let the client go because it was so distracting and then call him back and thank God he was really cool. And I was able to get him on a, you know, on the spot for later that night. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't close. But it okay. was really chaotic. I realized you'll that. Learn was how to, you'll learn, Amanda, how to navigate what's best for you. Okay. Yeah. Is so it? I, mm -hmm. Is it Go possible ahead. to do? I don't mind calling people, but that mm -hmm. setup is really. It causes a lot of anxiety that's not necessary when talking. Talk to your, talk to your leadership. Talk to your okay. upline and say, you know, and just be honest with them. Tell them what your feeling is. Yeah. Again, I believe that when I have people, if you work for me, what I would tell you is, okay, here's what we're going to do. Number one, you're going to mute it so you don't have to hear us. But we <laughs> want to hear you. That's number one. If you have a question or concern, <clears throat> you're going to put it in the chat. And I will track that as I'm working with you. So that way, if you have a question, it comes up right away. This way, we get what we want, which is watching you and listening to you, and you get what you want, which is golden silence and access for uh, support. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, so just talk to them, and they'll they'll work with you. Okay, I promise. And there uh, is some. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, sorry. That's it. Okay, Absham, do you have another question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to ask you. So that appointment that I got for Dalton for today. Do I have to text that uh, appointment or does Dalton text him? Yeah, I, I can't tell you the answer to that because I don't know how you guys are set up in that room to make calls and set appointments. You have to ask one of them or Dalton or somebody. I, I just don't know. I don't I know. I tried asking him, but he's not He's not texting me back. Well, anybody else that was in there that set appointments, what? how do you guys do it in Dushai? So, anybody who, oh, have, have, hold on one second. Anybody else in Dushai that has set an appointment? Millie, how did you do it? How did you get the information to the uh, agent? Through the group me, do shy chat. Okay. Are and you, you in the group me? How did the client get the actual Zoom login? Um, I got there. I got the login from the group me chat and I gave it to the client over the phone. 
Okay, there you go. So, Abshan, what I would do is either uh, we're going to get the group me, sorry, go to group me, get Dalton's uh, Zoom ID, and then text it or call a client back and give it to them and confirm the time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I love it. Let's see. Do we have any questions? I have a few questions, but I don't have a whole lot. What's going on? You guys don't want to have access to somebody who can give you answers? Or have I done everything in my power to give you every little bit of information that you need? I can't believe that's true. I try. Adam Bendel, you got any questions? Did you submit questions? I did, yes. Okay, gotcha. I have uh, I, seven people. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I have a question. Um, of all the, of the group, people that start, okay, let's say you have people, 50 people started today. Of those mm -hmm. 50 people, like a year later, how many of them still work here? Approximately. I know you don't have the. 63%. Okay. In, uh, in the Dushai hierarchy, 63% of people are still with us after one year. Okay. So, I mean, that number is pretty good considering the type of uh, AO is at like 24% and American Income Life, I think, is at, is below 20%, something like that. So, it's it's a really good number because you guys get a lot of information. Now, I don't know what it is exactly under Hyro or Mario, rather, and, uh, you know, those folks, I'm pretty sure it's high because that's where I started and I'm still here. And I know a lot of the faces that I see are still here. So, in general, everybody under the Mario Hyro the retention rate is extraordinarily high. Are we going to have people who fall off? Sure. I, I totally understand that. Well, yeah. But they're not falling off at extreme numbers. Right. Okay. Uh, Niall, your hand is up. What can I do for you? I don't have a question, but like, <laughs> so I just got my first like book and that fear spike, I guess it feels good to like, finally be past that when somebody finally answers <laughs> that's awesome and you like, got a she was real nice yeah all right there you go who are you passing it off to um so we were dialing on ronnie's leads um so the text i sent has his info but i kind of just passed it to the whole uh eddie and ronaldo uh -huh. just to let them know yeah, because they'll figure out if yeah, or, uh, like they'll figure out who's and we'll do it. Yeah, no, yeah. that's great. Good for you, man. And then, are you under the twelve and a half percent scenario? I don't know. I have to ask about that. <laughs> yeah, I would ask. Like, hey, my time is a thousand dollars an hour. So, what are we <laughs> doing to get me paid, right? And then, I don't, I don't know if you're under twelve and a half, and I'm sure there's something uh, that's happening, right? So, I think that's good. Let's see. Oh. Oh, here we go. Good times. All right, Brooke, what can we do for you? I just wanted to say that um, I made an agreement with my upline that I would be uh, get I would get a license out of it if I booked a call. So if there anybody wants to ask about that, I just wanted to let you guys know. I thought that was a really good idea. Yeah, get your licenses paid for. Absolutely. Anything, anything that's going to compensate you that you think is fair. Right. I'm not going to tell you what fair is. Although in my mind, I can tell you what fair is for me. However, uh, don't use mine, use yours, okay? Use your level of fairdom. <laughs> fairdom, is that a new word I just made up? All right, so who do we got? We got Melissa, we got Jamal, that's Millie. We got Kristalina, we got Heidi, we got Andrew, Adam, Mike, and Jason. It looks like I have one, two, three more. Oh, I got more, oh, thank you, Virginia. Thank you very much. Virginia, you had, do you have prior sales experience? Virginia, there's no Zoom experience though, that's for I sure. I have no Zoom. I have no Zoom experience, but I've been selling my entire career. And oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I thought so. I thought I remember that uh, in my back of my mind. Okay, great. Brooke Pickett actually said something nice. I appreciate that, Brooke. So these folks are going to be coming on. Let me see if I can't get a third person to join us. We definitely have two people join us. Nope, this goes right to voicemail. One of them is relatively new. The other one has been around for a while. One is in leadership. The other one I think is either just been promoted or about to be promoted, but they're both great people. So when they come on, we will do that. 
So I know that normally we don't take a break till around the 11 o'clock hour, uh, but we're just waiting for them to come on. And I don't want to start another subject so then we stop. Would you guys like to take a 10 minute break? Yeah, okay. So take a break for 10 minutes, come back at five minutes at the top of the hour, but I'll stick around. Millie, what can I do for you? I was just wondering if you were letting us go to Reco Day for my time. Yeah, probably not. Why okay. in the world would I do that? No, I probably will. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll have us all in there. I want people to get the feeling of what that's like. But Reco takes place at 11 a.m. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit and have the discussion with the panel. Then we'll go to Reco for what about an hour. It's a recognition. So what I have people do is get a sense of what it's like to have to watch an agency, recognize top performers, people who won contests, stuff like that, and see what that energy is like. Awesome. Okay. okay. Yep, so we're gonna do that. All right. So come back at five minutes to the top of the hour, everybody. Thank you. So, uh, Sam? Yes. It's Barbara. Um, oh, there. So, I just have to call Nicola and or text him and ask him, like, when I'd be phone released? Uh, you don't necessarily have to ask him because he's your upline. What you want to ask are the people that are managing the, room, the uh, training rooms, the training sessions, because they're right. the ones who make the decision. Well, but there's a different person there every day. Yeah, but I would ask that person, when am I going to get dial release? Because they're the ones who make the call. Okay. Right? So there's typically three rooms right now. Right. And I don't know which room you're in, but those three people get together. And based on the results of how well you did and stuff, they'll make a decision if, in fact, you're going to be dial released. Okay. So okay. that's yeah, but... I would ask. Okay. Because I, I did ask, and, you know, it's like, they don't give you a direct answer, like not even that, okay, well, you're horrible. You, it's going to be a while or anything like that. They're just like, well, and they, they like, they don't, they pretty much tell you they don't know. They won't, you know, they don't really yeah, give that, you any kind of so do you think they do kind that? of answer. I mean, they'll say, okay, okay yeah, I, you're good. Barbara, I understand where you're coming from. No, it's fine. I understand where you're coming from. If it's me and I'm sitting in that room, I am going to ask when I get in there today, hey, when am I going to be dialed released? What do I need to do to get dialed released? I need to make money because I'm hearing all my friends or all my you know, fellow new agents, they're like making money. I want to get dialed released. I want to start calling on leads. What do I have to do to do that? Right. That's all. Let's find out what that is. And they should be able to tell you. There's no nothing that says they can't tell you what you need to do to get released. And they'll be very frank. Hey, you need to know your rebuttals better. You need to learn your scripts. So that way it doesn't sound like you're reading it, right? They'll give you the feedback. You just have to corral them and say, what does it take for me to get dial released? Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Maysoon, can you hear me? May soon. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Yes. Uh, May soon. What hierarchy are you in? Um, why is the name trying a blank? And above Bobby Moore, uh, Hiro. Uh, um, okay. So Bobby Moore is with, uh, with uh, Torian Fields, right? Correct. Ashley Rust is your thing. Okay. So. Uh, I will send you an email that has information about how uh, all of that, how the technology works and what I use. Okay. And if I you appreciate went that. Class, yeah, yeah, you went through my class, so I have your email address already, okay? Yeah, I sent you an email after class about it, so I don't know if that makes a difference to try to find me. <laughs> no, I'll find you. You're in my list. I've just been buried doing other things, but I promise I'll get to it tonight, Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, thank you. You take care. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Sam, can I join back from another computer? It'll be like yeah, absolutely. Another... Yeah, okay. yeah. Just thank you. pop back in. All right. Passed my rubric last night, Sam. 
Whoa, who is that? Jason Duncan. Jason, you should have passed your Rubik on the first day. Are you kidding me? Well, that was the first try I had it for actual, like to actually have it booked. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, you you, you have history, right? In insurance sales, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I was a broker before coming over here. Yeah. So you just need to know the methodology. Once you got that, it's easy for you, right? Yeah, we Who's did everything about? over the phone. So like having this, you know, the HP Pro to show and like being able to be on Zoom and show people what we're doing, so much easier. Like, oh, well, I'll tell you, if you are able, if you were successful selling on the phone with no tools, what's you know, then this is a breeze, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, the first two sales I made, well, the first three uh, were all before this class and before I knew what HP Pro was. So the first one was completely over the phone. The guy didn't wouldn't get on Zoom, so I just went through it with him and sold him. And then uh, the next two actually did get on the Zoom with me, and I kind of went through HP Pro, just the no-cost benefits, because that's all I knew how to do and sold yeah. as well. But now that I know how to do this full presentation – uh, you know, I think it's going to be a lot easier. I've got a couple um, for this weekend that we'll see how they go. What, who's your hierarchy? Uh, Donnie Nevzadi and then uh, Ari. Ari Hiro, right? Yeah, Ari Hiro. Are they having you sell POS leads or what, what just type of market? veteran right now? But Donnie wants me to go to POS as well, but just, you know, just to have both available to me. So in my mind, right, if you were on my team, I would have had you jump on POS right from the word go yeah. because you're a broker. So you, you can read the report and figure out, you know, what somebody's portfolio looks like and what additions they can have. That's just my opinion. And you could have jumped veteran market is really, it's a really great market. There's nothing wrong with it. But what we're doing is we're teaching the mechanics yeah. of how to present. You already have that down. So now the question is just, Hey, give me leads. <laughs> right <laughs> and in the POS market, we typically don't see <clears throat> clients using PO, um, sorry, using HP Pro because again, you don't need to give no cost benefits to somebody who's already a client. Yeah, they've already got right? this. You're just yeah, you're not using it as a hook, so it's a little bit different. Now, I know in the future we're probably going to have some HP Pro functionality to support the POS market, but as you know, as a broker. In any of the markets where you're new and the, they don't, the client doesn't know you, you can follow a certain methodology. But once they become a client, however their portfolio is set up, you can attack it, right, multiple ways. Yep. So it becomes much more flexible. So trying to put that into HP Pro is difficult. There's just so many ways you could decide to sell and go after whatever you want to do. So that's why we typically say, hey, POS, you have to understand the portfolio and then take an approach. Yeah. And for me to try to put every single possible approach into HP Pro for you is somewhat difficult. But I will know this, we're going to get to a point where we're going to have the presentation. There's going to be something that's going to be put up there. We're going to time it, you know, all the stuff we do in the veteran market. We will have something along those lines. I just don't have any idea when. Because yeah, it's there's not so many variables to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And plus it's an art, right? It's the one part of the business that is completely art form. How do you want to do it? How far do you want to push? What are you going to talk about? Are you trying to, you know, finalize their portfolio or are you just trying to get a chunk at a time? I mean, there's so many different permutations yeah. you can come up with, right? Not a cookie cutter approach. You know, each each one's yeah. different than the master. Exactly. Kind of but that's why somebody like different. you with your broker background, like I would have thrown you right in there. Like, hey, here you go. You can read it. <laughs> All I have to do is sit with you and, and just show you what is the report telling you. And you can look at it and say, okay, I get that. Okay, I get that. Understand the policies. And now you're off and running. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm glad you passed it. What's that? So I'm glad you passed your rubric. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah me too. I did it with uh, with Dre, actually. Dre. Yes, Dre. We like Dre. She is real nice. She's very nice. Hopefully, she's going to join us here in a couple of minutes. She's going to be one of the people I'm going to have <clears> the uh, survival and success panel. But yeah, it's funny, you know, going through your class here, it's been so helpful, but uh, you know, everything you say, especially like with the banking and socials, you know, coming from the broker, we didn't have, like we didn't share our screen or anything, you know, it was strictly on the phone. So you don't know how many, well, I'm sure you know, but most people, you know, don't think about how many times 
you get through everything. You spent, you know, an hour, you know, 45 minutes on the phone with the person. And then they balk at the one of those, the social or the bank, you know, because yeah. I always oh. waited to do that absolutely last because that, you know, that's the bit that is rough to get out of people. So you want to, like you said, give, give, give. And then the board at the end. And then they yeah. see it and they feel it and they've answered all the medical. I mean, really, it's not like a four hour presentation, right? In the it's like 10, 12 minutes, and they feel better that what you're asking is not something out of the blue. It's something that's right here. And it's I'm almost done. Jason, I'm yeah. almost done. I just need your driver's license. Okay, cool. Jason, you need your social security number. Why the heck do you need that? Well, I gotta make sure that you're actually the person who died, right? right. Before the money's paid out. Mm-hmm. Everything's all set up now. I just need to know your banking institution. And people say it a different way. But to your point, if you just start off with that, because what they taught me, the way they taught me is hey, sell it, close it, and then open up eApp and, and tell them, hey, all I need you to do now is grab your driver's license and your bank account or your checkbook. And I always thought to myself, that's just an awkward transition. Yeah, you're creating a red flag for the people. Yeah, it's like, why do you want that so fast, right? But again, it's an art, whatever makes sense to whomever. So you don't do that, Sam? No, I, I never tell them, please get your checkbook and your driver's license. What I do is exactly the way I taught you, Brooke. I go all the way through eApp, and then at the end, I give them their routing number and have them confirm it so they feel good about it. I ask for their bank number their account number that's it that's it i never put it up front because i'm a big believer in giving to receive when we were i think he said driver's license and prescriptions maybe that's it today when i was watching yeah but either i wouldn't i personally would never teach somebody to do it that way either odd transition yeah a little bit it's just that you're creating an objection right off the bat and you don't want that particularly since you think you closed it it's not like you're at the beginning of your presentation and you've just spent five minutes with them and you're asking for it. You're like, oh, okay, well, if you don't give it to me, then you're done. It's like, no, you just spent probably an hour to get them to that point. You don't want to lose them because of a rough transition. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did you ask for the social? <clears throat> I would ask for the driver's license number first, and then I would say, okay, the uh, system requires uh, that we need your social security number. I'm in California. My starts with five, four, seven. What does yours start with? Again, I'm giving, <laughs> giving, giving, right? Before they give back to me. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, when I was the broker, the only way we had to build credibility was to send a picture of our license for the state. Um, so, you know, this is nice to be able to just fully just share the screen. Hey, this is the presentation. Boom. Okay. Here's the application we're filling out, you know, and they see everything. So it builds that trust without you having to do anything, really. It's the same process, but you're showing them in this versus, you know, there's a lot of people. One of my leads actually canceled his appointment with me and then called me back the very next day um, because he said he got scammed, but uh, he felt like I was being honest because he remembered sending the card in. So he set up appointment with me for this weekend. So, you know, actually being able to go through that with him, that's going <laughs> to mean the world to him because he just got scammed by somebody, you know, so to actually see everything that's little things like that, that people, because there's a lot of telesales, you know, and it's this. Oh, is yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Totally get it. Good, good times. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, that's never a good sign. Hello? Okay, let's just go on the voicemail. Killing me. Killing me softly. All right. Uh, Well, I'm back. We're back. I say that for editing purposes, but we're back. Uh, Melissa, who you got there? What's going on there? That looks dog bigger than you. What's Oakley. going on? No, he's just, he likes to sit up. It's Oakley. <laughs> he's Oakley. a three-year-old uh, Aussie Collie. And then I have a Coda who's five months old and is, doesn't like when, <laughs> doesn't like when Oakley year, gets attention. <laughs> a three-year-old Oxy He's an Aussie, Aussie Collie. Um, and then he's got what's called hanging tree in him, which is a part Aussie Collie, part uh, Catahoula leopard dog. 
He's so cute. <laughs> So we got one oh blue God. eye and one brown eye. That's way too complicated for yeah. me. Yeah. So Aussie Collie. See you, you. Aussie Collie. Okay. Gotcha. Nice. Hold on. Let me see if this person is going to join us. They said they would. Who are we waiting for? Virginia, Brooke, you got to get back on camera. Eric Byers. Hey, are you joining us? You're, you're awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right, so Joshua, Eba, Brooke, 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 where's Brooke? How many versions of you are in my room, Brooke? You're killing me. Oh, there I you are. There two. All right, got we got Brooke. All right, outstanding. We're waiting for one other person to join us, and then we'll get into this thing right here. Uh, during the break, I was talking to some people about, uh, and they were okay, no problem. Uh, they were talking about asking for the social security number and the uh, banking information, right? And that's always a tough sell. But we, uh, if you follow the way that I do it, I think it's going to be the most productive way to do it over time, right? Sort of like the script. Think of it this way. If you deviate from the script, it may work for you one time, maybe even two, three times. But will it work a thousand times? I don't think so. So that's why I want people to follow kind of the methodology we give you because it's proven over time that it actually works. Thank you, Joshua. Appreciate that. All right. For those of us in the room, we have uh, the great honor of, uh, well, you have the honor with me, right? I think that's, you know, I'm just kidding. It's not a great honor to be with me, but we have uh, a couple of people who are joining us in what I call the survival and success panel. And what they are, folks, who have been in the business either for a short period of time uh, or in leadership, maybe they're not in leadership. We're going to find out together who they are and what they've done. So everyone, please unmute yourselves and let's give a a proper new age and onboarding class 23-16 to them. That would be Dre Mulder and Sarah Desimone. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Hey. welcome in. Thank you so hey. much. Hey, yo. <laughs> Christian okay. Moore didn't even unmute himself. He's like, I don't really care. Oh, I did. Oh, come on, man. I watched you the whole time. Come on. I did. <laughs> All right, let's try one more time then to make sure that I'm a believer. Everybody, please unmute yourself and let's welcome properly Sarah Desimone and Dre Mulder. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. 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 Hi. Hi. <laughs> Why? Thank you for coming. Right. I feel a little better now, not too much. Man, what is up with this class? It's killing me. I think they're doing it on purpose. Sarah Desimone and Dre Mulder, thank you so much for joining us today. Obviously, we're going to go through and discuss mm -hmm all things and all questions that they have. But first and foremost, starting with Dre, please do me a favor, introduce yourself within 30 seconds. Tell us what you used to do before you join us and tell us your top reason why you're still here after the amount of time you spent with us. Please go ahead, Dre. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, so previous background, business development, project management. I've been with AO now just for a little over a year. Um, I am an SA on my journey to be a GA. I am currently under RE Hiro. Um, why am I still here? Is that your question, Sam? Yeah. Why <laughs> I mean, come are on, if, if you've worked in the corporate world, it's amazing to own your own business, have your own schedule, and do what you need to do. Um, and honestly, there's no other business like this business. So I'm excited to be here. Okay, that's fair. Good. And within 30 seconds, too. That was awesome. All right. Sarah Desimone, your turn. Uh, hello, my name is Sarah Desimone. Um, I am a brand new regional producer. I just got my first promotion um, and I was a full time network marketer and business owner before this. Um, so I was a Herbalife nutrition distributor um, and I owned a healthy shake bar. Um, and I switched over to this career earlier this year around May of 2023. Um, I had been doing Herbalife for over a decade, so it was a little bit scary to change careers, but I absolutely love it. I made the right choice. Um, and the reason why I'm still here is kind of a lot of reasons, but um, I love the flexibility. I love being able to be my own boss. I also love now um, building a team and helping people, um, and the money is really good. So. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and the money is really good. That is awesome. That's good to hear. So let's get into it. Let's see what the heck we have going on with some questions, okay? 
So the first one that I see is how long did it take for you to make your first sale? So this is kind of not fair. So when I say not fair, Sarah was a student just like all of you. She came through the program. Uh, Dre and I came in together way back in the day. So our situation is a little bit different. So we'll let Dre go first and kind of describe how she got her first sale. Go ahead, Dre. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you guys are very lucky, first of all, to have Sam. Um, because we didn't have these courses or these classes beforehand. We just kind of had to figure it out. And honestly, um, my first appointment was a sale. So <laughs> first one, sale, boom, done. She's just Sarah, really how good. about you? Were you the same way, first one, sale? I'm going to say it was a struggle. It was not easy. I would probably, out of a one to a five, I probably would have rated myself a one. But I got through it. And it was the sale, so it was a painful one, but it was good. <laughs> hey, she pro you probably just followed the script, and the script worked, and you got a sale, which is what we're supposed to do, right? Um, Absolutely. After I got out of Sam's class, I like to call it graduating, but after I graduated Sam's class, um, I uh, it took me about a week and a half. Um, my first sit was not a sale. Uh, my second sit. I don't think that one was a sale either, but it took me about a week and a half to to get coded with my first sale. Okay. It's about a week and a half to get your first sale. On a scale of one to 10, while we already know that Dre may have felt she was a one, but Sarah, for you, when you actually gave your first presentation on your own, what grade from a one to a 10, with 10 being the best one being, woof, what grade would you have given yourself? Uh, it took me a minute to feel confident to do it on my own. I think I did three with my manager before I had to sit on by myself. Uh, but once I did it, um, once you it, you surprise yourself at how good you are and you understand what you need to work on. I would say I would have graded myself at like a five or a six for the first one if it was at okay. And now, what would you say you're at? I would say I'm at like an eight. And if I were to observe you, what would you then be at? <laughs> oh, oh, you'd be at nine. Come on. I'm very supportive. Why does everyone feel that it would go down? It would go up. <laughs> After you uh, observed Tiffany the other day, the nugget that you gave her has helped me dramatically. Uh, just one little nugget you gave on the sponsorship tool. So, Okay. Awesome. All right, let's go to uh, what's your selling pattern? All right, so let's talk about your schedules. I think that's kind of what that question is getting at. So we we know we have the flexibility to kind of work our own hours. So describe for me on it with not a push month because a push month is a little bit different, but in a regular month, kind of what's your day look like as an agent, and then describe what your day looks like as a uh, both of you are regional producers or otherwise known as SA. So Dre, you can go ahead and go first. Oh, goodness. Um, so people that I'm training right now are on East Coast, so I kind of adapt to their time, but I will try to start my day around 10, just because it's not a push month. Push month, I'm usually 8 a.m. to like 9 p.m. at night, but um, right now, anywhere from 10 to 7, sometimes earlier, depending upon what I have and what's been scheduled for me. Okay. So, but you decide and when you want to I take decide. a and that's and six. I do it six days a week. Okay. You and me both, we're in it to win it. All right, so six days right. a week, typically 10 to seven, but you fluctuate. Sarah, yep. Sarah, Sarah Desimone, what about you? What is your schedule look like? Um, well, until the end of August, I still have a part-time job two days a week. So it's possible to still do this around a part-time job, but I can't wait to not have one. Um, so right now, um, I basically, when I don't have to work that job, I'm like a nine to five, sometimes 10 to six, uh, with now balancing and learning how to balance my own production and helping people that are coming out of training. Um, mm -hmm. I try to, uh, or not try, I look at it like a full-time job. Um, and on days that I have my part-time job, um, I still work with like a full-time intention, even though I don't get that entire day. So uh, I would say nine to five makes me feel is like, that's my full-time shift. And if I have okay. to work that, I will, you know, so. Okay. What is the threshold or the trigger that's going to say, okay, I need to give up the part-time job? Is it the commitment that you have to that job? Is it a money issue? What is the reason you still have that part-time job? 
Um, I just gave them a, a time commitment when I accepted the job that I would do it until the end of August. So I just have to see that through, but I cannot wait to, I don't need this. And you I don't can, need, okay, so that's the issue. You're making enough money in this that you don't have to work that part-time job, but you've committed to them. So that's yeah. why you're, okay. But you, when you first started, did you jump in full-time with us or were you straddling between what you were doing before? Okay. So you well, jumped in. What was the decision factor for you? Why did you say to yourself, I want to do this full time? Um, well, I had I still had this part time job when I started. So I've been part time this whole time, but I'm not you. I was used to being my own boss for over 10 years. I feel like I was born to be an entrepreneur. And so having to go get a part time job, I just always knew that that was going to be very temporary for me until I got back on my feet. Um, mm -hmm. after I lost my business in the pandemic. So uh, I knew as soon as I found something that could make me great money and something that I loved, I would be able to quit that job. Okay, gotcha. And then uh, Dre, why did you decide or what was the threshold for you to say I'm all in full time with American Income or AO? Um, mine's a little bit different uh, because remember my background, I came into this six months after I had a traumatic brain injury. Uh, um, I know your background, but none of them do. Okay. So <laughs> mine's a little bit different. Um, going back to a corporate office right now for me, especially with all the fluorescent lights, the schedule, everything else, um, just honestly would not fit for me and be possible. Um, mm -hmm. After my traumatic brain injury, it took me about a month and a half to learn how to walk around the block again. Uh, so there's that. But once I got that, I was just like, you know what? I'm grateful. I'm happy to be alive. This is amazing. And I'm just going to dive in full force. And that's what I did. And I started working with the team and I just came out swinging. Gotcha. So you spend a number of hours and Sarah, you do too, but it doesn't sound like you spend 60 hours in a week unless it's a push month. And then obviously, Dre, you want to make more money. So you're spending a little more time. I get that. How do you balance your personal time with the amount of time that you're working? I guess what I'm looking for is some of us have families. Uh, I'm not going to say you do or you don't, but we have personal things that we want to focus on. And, you know, we shouldn't be, what's the right word? We shouldn't be working. We shouldn't be living to work. We should be working to live. So how do you two, we'll start with Sarah first. How do you balance your personal indulgences with doing this job? Um, well, one of the beautiful things about this is you can determine your schedule, right? And you can determine your work ethic. So right now at the place in my life, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. This my this is my number one uh, focus at the moment. But it's still important to schedule in things with my friends, you know, social activities, going to the gym, those kind of things. So sometimes like I, because I wanted to, I will work my schedule around what's available for my team or what's available for appointments and sits. Um, but I always make sure at the end of the day that I'm doing things to, like if I have done my 250 points, I use my 250 points as like my boss, that's what I call it, my boss, um, which I can explain what that means in a second. But if I've done my 250 points, um, my team is good to go, then I shouldn't feel guilty about taking time off and going doing something with my friends or with my family. So as long as I am kind of being my own boss and making sure that every like the priority is AO, then as long as you've done work that day and you've really put in your numbers, you deserve to go do something fun with your <clears throat> friends. So Schedule we'll talk system. about the 250 point system later, but if I understand what you're saying, is when we had other jobs where we worked eight to five, nine to five, we knew we were in the grind for about four hours. We took a lunch and then we're in the grind for four hours and then we're done. What you're kind of telling me is you look at the world now a little different is that you look at your work day, maybe this long, but in the middle of that day, you're taking breaks out to do what you want to do. And then maybe you get back into it. So it's a different way of performing the same eight hours. It just may be spread over <clears throat> 10 hours, but in the middle, you're deciding when you're going to step away. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And Dre, what about you? Um, kind of the same thing. So um, I love the fact that we have teams. Uh, I definitely rely on my team. I build up my team. I also have my upline, Christina Salvatore. Um, tomorrow, I'm completely taking the day off because I have to go and get fingerprinted for my Florida license. And I mm. have to drive two hours away to Corona and two hours back. So having your other upline and your team there is 
like no other. No other business actually does that for you. When I did business development or project management, your upper management wasn't going to step in if you needed to take some time off just so they can hang out with the team and make sure everything's cohesive and done. But um, like Sarah, I try to take breaks during the day. So I may sometimes go for seven days a week, sometimes six days a week, but I do take those breaks in the day. If I have to go run an errand, um, I'm a caretaker, so I take care of my mother. Uh, if I have to take her to a doctor's appointment or different things to that effect, I'm able to leave and take that time and go do those things. So you are creating your own schedule. You're doing your own schedule. This is truly your business. Um, it's just nice to have that flexibility. Now, some so, of the lines may tell us, hey, you, you're, you either choose to work nine to six or 12 to nine or something like that. And while that's true, if we still have the flexibility within that time frame to do what we need to do for ourselves, right? And even if we said, well, I can't really work 12 to nine on this particular day, no one's, if I understand this correctly, none of the leadership is going to look at you and go, no, you have to do it this way, right? They're more interested yeah. in you producing the results. And the more results you all produce as agents, the more flexibility you have with virtually everything, right? Because no one's going to second guess if you're hitting the numbers. Okay, good. What has been your most valuable marketing tool for recruiting? Oh, okay. Well, we're never going to ask Sarah because she has no recruits whatsoever. So let's ask Dre. Dre, how do you recruit people? <laughs> um, <laughs> I do a lot from social media. So um, Instagram, Facebook, mostly Instagram. LinkedIn is just not what it used to be. So uh, we go with another outside company. We use Jazz HR. Um, so that's the way we can recruit other people. But I truly try to get those personal ones in. If I'm out and about in the community, I'm always, I've got my cards with me. I'm always ready to talk to people. I'm networking. You just have to kind of get your name out there and what it is that you do. And once somebody sees you being consistent, especially on social media, they're like, hey, I know I told you no before, but it looks like you're doing pretty well. And I really hate my job now. And I'm thinking about coming and working with you. How so just be jazz consistent. HR cost you? I'm sorry, what was that? How much does jazz HR cost? Um, for the hero, it's, uh, I want to say it's $99 a month. Okay. So we'll talk about that later. So that's great. So you're using a, a recruiting function. Yeah. All right, Sarah. They do have an introduction of $49.99, but. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. $49.99. Uh, Sarah, I know, you, like I said, you haven't really had too much success, but maybe you can chime in and tell us, you know, what is it you do? Um, so I, my biggest tool is, this is going to sound funny, but my mouth, <laughs> I, I literally like, um, so coming from a network marketing background, we recruit, that was a huge part of my business. And so if I'm passionate about something and I genuinely believe in something, then there's no way it's not going to come out of my mouth and share that with somebody that I love and care about. So everybody in my life knows that I was an entrepreneur. I was successful at what I was doing. Um, and then I lost everything. And so they've been kind of watching me to see like, you know, what is she going to do now? But even if that wouldn't have happened, it's kind of like I give this example. If you guys go see like the best movie you've ever seen in your entire life, like you're going to go tell people about it. You're going to be like, oh, my gosh, you have to go see this movie. You have to go see this movie. Well, this is something way better than a movie. This is a career that can totally change your life, that you have 100% freedom and flexibility to do it when, where, whenever you choose, as long as you have internet connection, um, you're helping people like and on another level, you meet incredible people along the way. And the money that you make is really good money. So in today's society, when there's, especially I live in California, there's people working, busting their butts, working two to three jobs and still not making ends meet. I feel obligated to tell the people that I know that are working those jobs or working hard like that, or maybe single moms, like there's no way that I'm not going to share this with those kind of people, like the people that I know absolutely need it. So I uh, wanted to see what would happen my first month in the business. I wanted to make sure that you know, when I, if I'm going to bring somebody into this, I want to trust that it's legit and it's something that I'm going to mm -hmm. stick with and that works for all kinds of people. 
I am a people person, um, but I have brought a lot of shy people, a lot of people that are t polar opposite personalities as me on t into this business and they're killing it. They're making- All right, all right, all right. hold on, hold on. I just, I get excited about it and I tell people about it. All right, so I think, what are you at now? You have, I know you got one recruit. Are you up to two finally? Is that how many you actually have? Um, I have two, uh, I have two times six. You have 12 people you've recruited? That's insane. I was told personal recruiting is very difficult to do and you're making it sound like it's a piece of cake. Is that right? Well, all I did was tell the my manager's story of her first three months uh, doing this, and now I'm adding my story onto it. So, as who's long your as manager? Who's your man? What story? Who uh, who who do you work for? <laughs> so Aubrey, uh, Aubrey and I did Herbalife together. Oh, no, not Aubrey. Come on, really? Hey, everybody, I'm just being facetious. That's ridiculous. So Aubrey came in as a student, just like Sarah Desimone. She brought in Sarah, and that entire team is now explode. How many people are under Aubrey now? Like 20? I, it's I, a ridiculously high number, right? I think it's close to that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and they're doing it because they believe in it. So let me ask you this, Sarah. You waited a month before you felt, hey, do I know what's going on? Do I believe in the company? Would you advise any of these students to wait for a month or would you tell them, hey, you need to go now? Well, I didn't wait a month to tell like my core people. So actually, when I was in your class, I had two people in that class with me I already. Know, I know, I know you're awesome. I get that. What advice would you give these people? Yeah, you guys don't wait. Even if you feel like you don't want to be a manager, mm. even if you just want to do sales yourself right now. That's totally fine. There's a team that will train those people. Um, but having a team um, and working on getting your five, uh, definitely not only for income purposes but also just like it feeds my soul to be able to help people do this you know what i mean like it's incredible what we get to do it's, it's helping people not just helping you know veterans and protecting families but you're also like giving people a life-changing opportunity so um that's awesome you. dre hold on one second sorry dre how much money do you make if you personally recruit somebody into the business do you know 150 usually what that can't um, be Seven fifty. So if you if you're in this class, you're a new student in your first ninety days, and you bring somebody in, and they they get coded before your ninety days are up, we give you seven hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't think about that. I mean, that would be nice if you got that. But literally, for the rest of your career, every single time you bring somebody in, Sarah, how much money do do you get paid as a bonus for every person you bring in? After your first three months, it's two fifty. $250. I mean, there are people who don't sell anything, or maybe they sell one thing, they do the very minimum, and their whole focus on doing nothing but recruiting, because they make $250 for every person that comes in the door. So instead of paying a third party recruiting company to do all the work, we pay you. We pay you. Can you imagine uh, Dre telling you or telling recruits the story? Here's the biggest thing. Maybe I don't know the best part of the story, but I got some people who are interested or some friends or people I know or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I want you to talk to Dre or Sarah and they'll do the pitch. They'll do all the heavy lifting. You don't have to even do that if in fact you want to recruit. And to Sarah's point, you don't have to move into leadership if you don't want to. Here's the beautiful part. You can recruit like Sarah did 12 people, not be in leadership. Those 12 people are over there. Maybe they work for me. Maybe they work for Dre. They're sitting over there. The moment that you decide to move into leadership and sign your leadership contract, all 12 of those people now are yours. And all this, and we'll find out tomorrow how much money you make off them. But basically, they're driving your paycheck so you have that passive income coming in. All right. So, yeah, neither one of you are very good at recruiting. We've just learned that. Let's go to the next thing. What was your most challenging week? What did it look like? Okay, so let's start with you, Dre, and, and challenging weeks. I know I've gotten phone calls from you before, so I know we've gone through it together. We're like, oh my <laughs> God, what am I doing? So what was the most challenging week and how did you get out of it? Or how did it turn around? Um, well, I guess it's a good thing that I do truly have short-term memory. <laughs> In this business, you have to have short-term memory. It doesn't matter if your day's bad, week's bad. You just got to keep plugging away, stay consistent, be disciplined, 
and just push through it because you could go through a couple days, even a week, and you don't make a sale and you're just like, what am I doing wrong? What is happening? And then come the next day, bam, 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 sales. And you just made 10,000. Right. So, so we have a saying, correct me if I'm wrong, right? We have a saying that some will, some will, so will. So what? So what does that I mean? I add some what profanity in there, but I'm not going to say it here. <laughs> so what... <laughs> what does that mean to you? Does that so, some will, some won't, so what? It, it just doesn't matter. You just have to be like a duck and let that water roll right off your back. It's on to the next. Every no is next opportunity. Let's go. <laughs> just okay. keep then, pushing, keep moving. <clears throat> one sale can make your day, one 100%. day can make your week, and one week can make the month. So what we tell people is, yeah, you can look at the business like day by day or even week by week. But what you should really be looking at is a month over month. Are you making the money that you want month over month, right? And in push months, that amount of money could be really high, but in a non-push month, it's lower. But now you start looking at it year over year and you're like, hey, I'm breaking six figures. Hey, I'm breaking 200,000. Now I'm starting to make the money that I want to make for my family. Uh, how do you remember the script, Sarah? How do I, what the script? How do you, how did you memorize? Well, first of all, do you memorize the script? Could you tell it? Actually, could you do your A1? No, I'm just kidding. Do you memorize the script or do you still have it up and read it? Um, I still have it up and read it. What? You of all people? The Dre, because she admitted short term, I get. But you, you're young. You should have memory like an elephant. It should be no problem for you. Why I, are you not memorizing the script? I don't, in the beginning, I was so happy that we got to turn the camera off because I was like, fall, like I was like in my script like that. Uh, but now um, I just, I use it as a guideline to make sure that I'm not, you know, leaving anything out. Okay. And what about you? Uh, well, we know, Trey, you probably, well, Trey, tell us, do you read the script? Do you have it up or do you memorize it? What's your deal? Um, I always have the script up, but even with my head injury, I'm fine that I can recite it in different areas. Not always, but I still need it to kind of stay on point. Um, so I keep it up all the time. <clears throat> For someone who said that she had a head injury, I think you got it pretty well together. So, nice all right, day. how long did it take you to get released? Okay, let's talk about that. So. For you, Dre, a little bit different. For you, Sarah, you were in class. So let's ask you first, from the moment uh, that class was over, how long did it take before your upline said you were released? Released, like I got coded or what do you mean? Released you to sell, given leads. Oh my gosh, released. Sarah, you're in leadership. You don't know what that, oh, you're <laughs> killing me, but that's okay. When I got out of your class, but um, it took me a week and a half to get my lead pack because that's when I got coded. Okay, so we can half gotcha. And then Dre, you and I were in the things together. It's a little different for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Much different. He leads before um, I got coded to call. I'm so sorry, sir. What'd you say? So before I made my first sale, my manager gave me some of her leads to call to help me to book an appointment to get coded. Okay, awesome. So Dre, talk to me about fear spikes. Because your situation was different, but did you go through fear spikes in terms of making a phone call and then having your first sit with a client and then your first sale? Did you have any fear spikes? So for me, um, nothing in regards to the phone, just because I was so used to doing a lot of negotiations over the phone. I'm going to tell you those Zoom every single time. Um, I still get them. I still get the jitters and I like it. You have them right now. I do have them right now. That's why my face is red. <laughs> Well, we can't tell. You look perfectly fine. Uh, someone I feel asked like me, I look what, red. what does coding mean or getting coded? So getting coded, <clears throat> the, you go through a training class, whatever it is, to get coded means you have to sell your very first deal. Different hierarchies do it different ways. If you were working for me, I would give you a deal in the sense that I would have a lead, we'd set it up, uh, it would be a state that you're licensed in, I would walk you through it with the client so you get the experience and you would get the sale. Other hierarchies don't do that. What they do is they have you find somebody to sell to. So let's say if you knew anybody with par uh, any parent with young children, you could sell a policy on that child for like eight, nine dollars a month. That would be enough to get you coded. Once you're coded, then we can assign leads to you. That's how it works in the business. It's not a bad thing. Everybody goes through it. It's just your very first deal, however you get it. Okay. That's what coding means. 
All right, next thing is we talked about the script. How can you make the most money? <laughs> how, how can you make the most money? We have people in this business that have sold over $2 million in ALP in a year. So, and, and you two can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way to make the most money is you just got to work a lot, right? If all you're interested in is making money, then you just got to work 365 days, take every single sit you can and close them all as, as high as you can. Is that, is that right? You're going to wake up thinking of work. You're going to wake up dialing someone already. <laughs> that's you coming out of your sleep. <laughs> Right. So I, I probably don't do that. Right. But I don't. <laughs> you don't do that. Sarah, we know Sarah doesn't. She's got a whole personal life going on that none of us know about. So she doesn't do it. But even though you're not killing yourself, are you happy with your financial situation? Dre, I'm not going to ask you how much I'm money you make. Happy. Okay, but I'm never happy. Okay. But is it happy? Are the lights still on? Electricity still flowing, right? Everything's still flowing. Everything is good. I own my own home in San Diego, California, so things are great. Um, yeah. However, I I always want to do better, better, better. Uh, San Diego, you're killing me. I've been there twice. I wish I could live there. All right, Sarah, <laughs> uh, I know you're an entrepreneur and you did all this stuff. Are you happy? with your financial situation today? Yes, it has overly exceeded my expectations. Overly exceeded your expectations. Wow, that's awesome. And you still have a chance to even make more and more and more money, right? It's nuts. Okay, uh, what book? No, let's go back up to the top. We talked about that. Oh, how long did it take to feel natural doing the selling? So when you go through my course, apparently, People feel a little stilted because it's very scripted, whether it's the phone calling, whether it's the presentation. How long did it take for both of you to get to a point where you're like, yeah, I kind of got this. I got the flow. I'm good with it. It feels natural to me. Um, I can start first, but so Mario and Ari wrote our scripts. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> They're both from Albania. I remember so when that. I first read the script, I was just like, this is not how I speak at all. Yep. Um, so I just had to go in and kind of change some of the words, but nothing drastically. It was still the point. It was just grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. And um, once I just said it to myself over and over within a week, I started talking like it. And I swear, I feel like I talk like them now sometimes. <laughs> Okay, Sarah, what about you? Um, I would say like there's still part like I still don't feel a um, hundred percent comfortable with it. I, I think I feel 90% comfortable with it. And then the thing that's the factor for me is like the person that I'm sitting with. You could have really good rapport and things could be going good and I feel super confident, or if so, if it's not that if like they're kind of quiet or you know, they're not they're not that interested in it, then it makes me feel mm -hmm. like a little bit more nervous, but um, I'm still not a hundred percent comfortable with it. Okay. <clears throat> if I were watching you give your presentation to your client, would your comfort level, it's not me per se, but just anybody watching you, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, do you perform differently if one of your staff is watching you give a presentation to a client? Does that change how you act towards that client? Uh, I haven't been able to. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, sir. Go ahead. You haven't been able to get what? I haven't been able to present yet. I'm moving at the end of this month and I can't wait to set up my new office, but I haven't been able to show uh, anybody. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay. So you will, though. Yes. Okay. Andrea, I know you've given presentations with ride alongs, right? Yes. And you're already um, fidgety in Zoom, so does it make it worse? <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not fidgety when they're there. I think I'm a lot more on point because I know that when they're watching, they're going to mimic maybe 80% of what I do um, and, you know, 0% of what I don't do. So... I'm trying to make sure that I'm following it by the script. And when I hit the rebuttals, I definitely hit the rebuttals and kind of push a little harder than I might normally not do um, okay. in a nice way. But so I'm a lot more on point when I have ride alongs. So I'm like, okay, Ari, I hate it, but keep sending me people and I'm more than happy to do it. Nice. 
What about uh, <clears throat> the tools that we have, right? So in my mind, there's three major, well, there's four tools. You have the scripts, you have Zoom, you have HP Pro, and you have EAP, right? Those are the four major tools to uh, work with clients and sell the insurance. Which one of those tools for you at the beginning of your career was the most difficult to figure out how to use? Sarah? Uh, yeah. Dre? HP Pro. HP Pro, because we learned without HP Pro. So for us, it was like, oh, it's hard to figure this out. Okay, so let's uh, start with you first, then Dre. HP Pro, how long do you, it take for you to feel proficient navigating HP Pro with a client? Who did you want to go first? You, you, Dre. Oh, me? Can, oh, me, uh, me. Uh, can, you <laughs> hear, uh, Andrew, yeah. can you go? <laughs> go Who, ahead, what? You, what? Anybody? Um, HP Pro, it probably took me just a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, normally, it should have taken me a lot less, but it took me a couple of weeks just to get really comfortable with sharing the things on Zoom. I would literally um, have my friends sit there and I'm like, okay, I want to see everything on your screen while I'm typing and pretending that I'm presenting to you because I wasn't trusting that I wasn't sharing the right thing. And you didn't have a class like this either. They just said, hey, I you got to start using HP this Pro. Is all what that is. Okay. And then for you, sir, I think you're probably the epitome of somebody who goes through this course. What they found, find the most challenging is probably using EAP. Why is that? Why in your mind do you think EAP was a ch not necessarily a challenge, but it's the one sticking point for you in terms of tools? Um, I just think there's a lot to process when you're learning EAP and we have to learn it in a short time frame. And so there's so many things like you, there's underwriting, there's making sure you fill out the app correctly. There's the notes that you put, there's every situation is just different. So once I got through HP Pro, I was feeling really good. And then boom, this new thing, you know, showed up. And so it just took me, you know, actually filling it out with clients a couple of times to understand it. And now I feel way better about it. Uh, mm -hmm. the thing I would say that I struggle with the most right now is just getting people to figure out how to get on the zoom call. Um, that is the, the, the biggest issue that I have at the moment. So which market are you in? Veteran. Veteran. Andre, you're in veteran as well. Yeah. Right. So typically going to be older, probably less technology savvy. So the, the issue with both the tools, HP pro and, uh, EF is the race to 100. Right. It's really doing it and giving 100 presentations because we feel that once you've gone through 100 presentations, you typically have seen 90 to 95 percent of all the scenarios that you'll encounter. And you'll learn from it each time you do like, oh, yeah, I forgot to put the sex in. That's why I can't do X, Y and Z. Right. Or I forgot to do the underwriting or I submitted somebody a standard when they should have been a trial. You'll slowly pick that up and you'll learn that. Right. Let's talk about statistics now, not in terms of the tool uses, but in terms of performance. <clears throat> what is your close rate? Not this week, this month, but in general, where would you say your close rate is? Trey? Oh, God, probably 80%. 80%. Sometimes a little bit lower. It depends. Yeah, 79, a little bit lower. Okay. Sarah Desimone, you've got to be at like the 20s, right? The 10s, maybe? I... <laughs> I always get so mad at myself that I don't have this number for you when I get to this class. I need to remember that next time. I would I would guess like no, why did you say 10 to 20? I would guess like 60. 60. So definitely more than 50%. All right, so let me ask you this. How in the world are you guys getting such high close rates, right? In your mind, is it high or is it like the norm? Dre, is it normal for you to be closing at 80%? Uh, I'm going to tell you, I went through one month where it, my, it was like 10%. And I was like, what is happening? But it was because people couldn't qualify. So okay, there are so going to be some of months like that. But um, no, it's just consistency. This is a numbers game. The more people you sit with, the better chance you have to close. You could sit with a, three people in one day and you don't close anything. And you could sit with one person the next day and it's a close and it's a big sale. So the more people you sit with, the better your results are going to be. All right. So let me ask both of you this then. You've both been around for a while. Sarah, you just got promoted leadership trade for about a year. What should a student or a new agent sitting in this class, what should they expect their close rates to be? 
And honestly, I mean, if it's going to be lower and it builds up, that's fine. But give me an idea. What do you think their close rates are? And Dre, you could probably talk to this the most because you've been getting students coming out of the class. You've been working with them, right? What should a student expect their close rate to be? Well, honestly, I have two students right now that um, were fresh out of your class that are already closing sales on their first try. So, um, again, it's just the numbers. I try not to look at the close ratio, quite honestly. If I feel that I'm having a problem or I'm getting the same consistent answer, then, of course, I'm going to go to my upline. But um, try not to look at the numbers. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. This is you versus you. Just get out there and be the best that you can do 1% better every single day. Um, just stay consistent and don't get discouraged. Wow, so you didn't give me an answer. Right? I didn't because, so I, I, you know, that. people can come out the gate and crush it. And then some people can start a little slow and they're going to surprise you. There's people in our team right now that they started off slow. Look at Maria and now she's killing it. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, okay. it just depends. Sarah, what about you? You're not going to be happy with my answer because I uh, this is my first class that I'm teaching someone. I have Eric in here, and uh, so I don't know how to answer what to explain. I'm sorry. She was muted. Apparently, there's some technology issue going on. <laughs> no, I do want the real answer. I may not like it, but I think these new agents, it's fair. They need to hear it. They need to feel what's real. So give me the real answer. I don't, I don't know the real answer. What I'm trying to tell you is, is Eric is my first person that I'm training. He's in this class. And so I don't know what to tell you. I would say okay. maybe 30 to 40 I'm, percent, I guess. I'm going to give everybody the, the real answer, what the statistics tell me, okay? 40%. I said 40%. That. There you go. 40% of close rate. Now, what people typically have the most difficult time doing is booking the appointments. For whatever reason, they, that's the hardest part. But once you get somebody on there, even if you were horrible, even if you were me with no experience and I haven't been in productions, so I don't know what the heck is going on. I would probably close at 25 percent because the system is set up that way. As long as you follow it, one in four people are going to buy. The remaining part <clears throat> gets you to 40 to 50 or gets you to the vaunted 80 that Dre has is about your art, how well you're connecting, how well you're building report. It's why I drill us so hard in the beginning of the presentation in the A1, because I'm a true believer that if you build rapport and credibility, you'll get forgiveness. If you make a mistake somewhere else, if you say something that they question, they'll forgive you. But if you have no rapport built, there's no forgiveness to give, and then you have challenges, right? Okay, so I do have a very uh, policy trigger question. This is awesome. I like this question. So I'm going to read it, and you guys think about it. All right, here we go. What is your recommendation or how do you feel out presentations for adding additional coverage, <clears throat> such as the 10 year RNC, the uh, accidental death benefit, uh, waiver of premium? Because in our class, we talk typically in the script about selling what? In the veteran market, it's almost exclusively whole life or senior graded whole life combined with the A71 uh, product. <clears throat> but of course, we show them all the other products are available. You guys have been doing this for you ladies, rather, I've been doing this for a while. When do you think to yourself, should I add in the cancer product or should I add in the critical illness or hospital indemnity or the 10 year RNC? When do you start to think that? What is the trigger for you to make you think about the other policies that we offer? Yes, Dre? Anytime you have a smoker, get a cancer policy on them. Okay. And Smoke anytime coffee. you have someone that smokes and they haven't had been diagnosed with cancer, get them a cancer policy, a hundred percent. Okay. So cancer for you. And Sarah, what about you? Do you, have you gotten to the point where you're adding other coverages besides just the standard package? Um, I'm starting to get more comfortable with it, but I, when I have presented it, I pay attention. Like I, listen for like if they say um in the beginning survey that they they own their home and that they have a mortgage i know that's a mental note for like 
to talk about mortgage protection, you know, in the needs analysis. Um, if they, if I'm asking some health questions, just like she said, if someone says, yes, I smoke, then that's going to be like, okay, I need to make sure I talk about this. So at the beginning, I wasn't focusing on those. I was just focusing on the two main products that we sell, getting comfortable with that. But now that I'm getting more comfortable, like talking with the person and asking certain questions to, to figure out what problems I can solve uh, later on down the road, um, I just listen for little things like that. Okay. Awesome. And, yeah. Can I just interject one other thing? If they are young, because sometimes we do get the young vets or the vet referrals, if they are young, put in um, a, te a 10 year renewable, <laughs> just because if you try to go after big numbers with someone that's young, $200,000 policy, $250,000 whole life policy, is going to be hard. You're going to get underwriting that's consistently going to come back to you. They're going to send them out to get medically checked. They're also going to come back and say, okay, they were medically checked. They might be fine, but why do they want this amount of coverage? What do they make annually? So offset the whole life with a term policy is your best policy to put higher numbers in place for someone that's younger. Okay. And, and that that that's an art it's figuring out what makes sense based on what the client is giving you right? right so just time will help you get better at doing that all right i'm actually not going to keep you guys for the full hour because i know you're very busy you have things to do so i'd like to wrap up with one question <clears throat> and i'm not going to do the typical question i do here i'm going to say what is the number one piece of advice that you are going to give to these folks as they're about to be coded released and starting on their careers with american income or with ao so the number one piece of advice I you want them to take away from this meeting. Dre, you can go first. Listen to everything Sam says. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, don't listen to anything. Hey, I still call him sometimes, even though I didn't have a class with him. But um, the one thing, recruit, don't wait. Okay. And so referrals, so two. Okay, uh, two for one. Referrals are absolutely crucial to your business and recruiting, even if you don't want to move into leadership, will get you paid, right? No doubt about that. So there we go, Sarah. All right, Sarah Desimone, we're going to try, because I know this has happened to me in the past, we're going to go with, I'm going to tell you two things. What are the top two things that you want these folks to uh, take away? I'm so happy you gave me two things. So the two things I would say, um, and Drea, or, or Drea, right? Am I saying that correctly? Hopefully. You can say Drea, that's fine. Okay. Uh, she already mentioned it. Um, so you can't compare yourself to others. Comparison is the thief of joy. So the biggest thing that I can tell you guys is just follow the system and get to your first sale. No matter how you got it, just get to your first sale as soon as you can. Because once you do that first sale, your belief is going to change. Right now, you feel weary about your belief. You're like, I know I've got the tools and everything. I just don't know if I can actually do it because you haven't done it yet. Get to that first sale, take on belief from your managers, take on belief from your mentor, whoever you're working with, take on belief from Sam if you don't have it in yourself. But don't compare yourself to other people. Some people are going to make their first sale really quick out of your class. Some people, it's going to take them a month. That's their own journey. You just need to focus on yours. Um, and once you make that first one, your belief will change. And you'll start to understand that this really is possible for you as long as you just keep working. So don't compare yourself and get to that first sale that, so that you can feel that belief uh, within yourself. Don't compare yourself. That's really good. Isn't there some type of phrase with that? Don't compare I yourself. I think she took it from Macy's believe during Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As always, uh, it is a pleasure. Everyone, please unmute yourself and let's thank both Sarah Desimone and Dre Mulder for joining us on the Survival and Success Panel. Thank you, ladies. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. As always, Sam, thank thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care. I will call both of you later to tell you what I thought you did. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give you a call <laughs> later. Everybody, appreciate it. <laughs> all right everyone that's uh awesome those two uh they're a joy to have they're a joy to speak with they're a joy to interact with answer questions for they're very very lovely and they're very talented too one thing i want to tell you in terms of recruiting <clears throat> so i'm a third generation service instructor my grandfather did it was a little, little all right it's 100 men no women women worked in the office as support then my father did it and it kind of went like this. 
a little bit. I would say it went to 90-10 because <clears throat> you still need to go into people's homes. Typically, women are comfortable driving two hours away and going into a stranger's house. Today, AO has 51% women to men. The business has drastically changed. And what is the one thing I told you I have a challenge with the most? Virginia, do you remember what one thing I said I have a challenge with? Do you recall? It's okay if you don't. You just say, I don't remember. Okay, Melissa, do you remember? Do you have a challenge with? Yes. Does anybody remember? I have no challenges. I'm perfect. No, Mike, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I, my aggressive excited. face. That's right. And that was part of rapport. Oh. Women have a much better, not better, I would say it's easier for them to build rapport right from the word go. At least that's been my experience over the years, hiring women, hiring men, having large sales teams. Women have a very, very um, excellent way of building rapport. Amanda says, well, then why do I still see more men in leadership? Are you talking about in AO? Is that what you're talking about, Amanda? Well, I think so. As far as all of the exposure we've had in this yeah, time. Because, because uh, the Dushai hierarchy has been mostly men, but it's starting to shift. AO, which is what we're all part of, when you go on their calls and you look at it, they're the ones that are 5150 or 5149. And the, the disparity is growing. We're hiring more women. We're recruiting more women. Now, what that means for you, Amanda, is it takes a while. When you, since you had such a huge disparity, men are all in leadership. They do all this stuff. The agents count is going this way. It'll take a little more time for these women to rise up and become leaders in the organization. However, we have them. Ashley Rust is an RGA. We have a, the newest partner is a female at the highest level. So we also have ladies rising. So there's a lot of stuff that's out there that if you look at how AO is doing, we're shifting more to uh, a more of a balance, let's say. Because I think 5149 is sort of statistically insignificant, but there's a much more uh, higher level of balance, which I think is really key when you talk about recruiting. Because in the old days, if I were to recruit my daughters, I would be like, yeah, you don't know, don't do this job. I don't want you driving somebody's house you don't know. But now, if my daughter's are like, hey, dad, what should I do for career? I'd say you should take a look at this because you can be in the safety and sanctity of your own home, work your own hours, have family, work around all of that and still make a huge amount of money. So, yeah, definitely recruiting, I think, is very, very key. All right. So give me feedback. Did you guys like hearing from them? Was that useful to have your questions answered from somebody who hasn't got like white hair on his beard and kind of doing all that? Right. Yes. Will, what can I do for you? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that uh, that answered a lot of questions that I didn't really have the, uh, I hadn't formulated yet, like as a sentence or a question. Yeah, that's that fine. Good. I'm glad. Good. I'm really happy. What did you think now? Did that give you some information that was useful for you? Yeah, uh, it was good to hear, um, you know, people that were doing it in the field, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So obviously you can ask questions in your upline. You're going to see how things go on, but <clears throat> everybody's accessible. We're going to talk about the platinum rule that AO has tomorrow. And when we do, we'll kind of see what the feeling is and why the leadership is the way it is and why they're willing to spend time with folks in order to help facilitate their careers. All right. So here's how the rest of today is going to go. We are going to join the AO Dushai hierarchy to watch RECO, which is rec recognition of performers. I want you to see what that's like, get a taste of that. We're going to do that for one hour starting in seven minutes. Okay. After one hour with them, then we're going to come out of that because they keep going, I think, for a while. Uh, but maybe they'll be done in an hour. I don't know. But typically, I want you to come back into this room because we need to take our EAP and field underwriting test. Okay, so everyone understand what I'm asking us to do? Yes, no, maybe so? At two o'clock, come back in this room. Ye well, if two o'clock is... Oh, sorry, at, okay, after one hour, yeah. Two o'clock <laughs> so my me, time, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the, the West Coast, we're at 11 o'clock going to the Dushai hierarchy to watch RECO, and we're going to come back at noon my time. Okay. That makes sense for everybody. And then we'll chat a little bit 
where is the reco? It is the same place that we listened to uh, Troy yesterday talk about uh, path to partnership. Does everybody remember uh, the login for that? Or should no, I put it mine didn't say, it. can you copy it one more time? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So just give me a second here. Let I me... put it in the chat. Oh, you did. And can the code is what? Do you remember the code? 2021. Thank you, Melissa. That was very awesome. I appreciate that. So let me I think that chat might have just gone. Oh, I didn't through. put it. I have it directly to you. Sorry, everyone. Let's yeah, can you put it out to everybody? Yep, got it. So I'm working three laptops right now, and I'm trying to make sure that each one is appropriately set up and ready to go. Yeah, so if you recruit people, you get help. Here's the biggest thing when it talks about recruiting is that you don't have to do all the training. You don't have to have all the knowledge. You have people around you that will assist you. What other job where you can hire somebody, other people will train your people. And then when you're ready, if you want to move in leadership, all those people will fall under you. I don't know any other job that will do that. And in the process, you make pretty good money and you uh, work the hours and the time that is uh, consistent with what you need to do. And when I say that, what I'm really referring to is you're going to work whatever hours you want to work. The reality is we know when people are typically home, so we know usually when we have to have appointments, but there's so much flexibility within that that it makes it worth it to me. Right. Instead of commuting an hour and a half to San Francisco every single day, uh, both to get there and then to come back. That's three hours of my life that I can never get back each day. I don't have to worry about that now. Right. I, if I want, I can work from my home, although I think that that doesn't work for me. So I lease an office and I come in here and work. But that's flexibility, right? That flexibility is huge. All right, everybody, I want you to go ahead and log off of this call. I'm going to leave uh, it open and it'll be ready when you come back. I will see you in about an hour, but you'll probably see me on the RECO call. So I will chat with you in an hour. Thanks, everybody. All right, awesome. So we're back. How are we doing? Did you guys like RECO? I mean, is that the first time you guys have seen? It happens once a week. Uh, Joshua, did you were you able to see RECO? Uh, yeah, just a bit. I had to come in and out just because of family stuff, but. No worries. no worries. I got you. Who was able to sit through the whole thing? Adam, was that you? Did, were you able to sit through it? Yeah. <clears throat> what did you think? Uh, it was good seeing like real life, um, you know, people in scenarios explaining like, this isn't just for, um, you know, people who have been in it for years upon years. You know, there's some people who have been here for a while, other people have been here not even a year and still being able to, to produce a ton of the stuff and the community behind all fun stuff so yeah and every single time those people are getting paid they're helping families right and christian gocha at the end he's telling you hey i was a painter i was a manual labor guy look at him now i mean yeah he's being a little modest when he says he makes six figures he makes a little bit more than that but still it's uh pretty good christian your hand is up what can i do for you i didn't realize you like giving out money <laughs> so i do that on saturdays and what we're trying to do is have more of a call session on Saturday because people are available on Saturdays. So I'm not, I mean, if we can move people from the phone call to an OTS, that's great. But really Saturdays are when people are there. So what I used to do is I would spend four hours on a Saturday. No matter what I worked Monday through Friday, on Saturday I would spend four hours. And I would probably start at 8 a.m. my time in California and I would call East Coast Leads. And I would get all my uh, appointments booked for Sunday because that's when people are home right after church. That's just how I used to do it. And then you know what I would do? I'd come into whatever mandatory meeting I had to do on Monday, and I wouldn't work Tuesday. That was my schedule, Wednesday through Sunday. That's what I did. And Saturday, I cheated, only work half a day. And I made pretty good money doing that. So it's up to you how you want to do it. But when you call people, you want them hopefully to be home, right? Pick up the phone. So like I said, I think I gave away, I gave away over $3,000 on Saturday. Now I can't do that every Saturday, but how surprised will you be if you're like, Hey, I'm going to show up to the Saturday call session. And then I'm sitting there, I'm listening to you. And I say, you know what? I'm going to give you a thousand dollars Christian simply because you're here. Simply because you got the last OTS. I don't know. Would you feel good about that? I, I would, would feel very great about that. Yeah. So those people are getting paid today, right? Put it right into their bank account. Can you give them their money? Boom. But I want them to get recognized. 
So even if you're not released yet and you're just dialing and you're trying to get OTSs, you're going to get, and do shy anyway, you get 12.5%. In other agencies, you might get some sort of, uh, you know, negotiated how much. But if you're in Dushai and you're working on Saturday, you can get a hundred bucks just because I decided to give it to you because you're here, because you're the first person who joined the Zoom. You're the last person that was there. 14 hours on Saturday. Now, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't in the Zoom for 14 hours. So I started, I was there for five hours. I dropped off for two hours because I had some stuff I needed to do. And then I came back and I had it on one of my computers and I was chatting with people. And literally up until 10 o'clock Pacific time, they were calling into Hawaii credit union leads and they were getting appointments. And that's how Edis got a thousand bucks. I don't know, it's a pretty good deal to me. Uh, Will, what did you think? Sorry about that. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I, the one thing that really got me is the, uh, the way that I think they support each other. Um, it feels like a very strong community. Yeah. <clears throat> Whatever team you join, I think is a strong community. Uh, for well, AO, anybody within AO. Okay. But yeah, I'm glad you recognize that. That's good. And you can ask questions of anybody. Questions of me, even after you haven't been a student of mine three years from now, you can call me up. And if I can help you, I will. Right. There's a lot of things that we do. As a matter of fact, I, I believe, that's what I believe. I actually believe that I talked about <clears throat> the platinum rule, right? Did I did I do that? I did, yeah, before? No, Brooke, did I talk about the platinum rule? I'm losing my mind. You did. Yes. Okay, I did, thank goodness. I'm not losing it that bad. So let me find- Like treating people how you, treat, how you wanna be treated almost? Yeah. Like well, the golden rule? <laughs> that's the golden rule. So I'm gonna find I'm going to find something here and I'm going to play that talks about the platinum rule. So hold on one second. I'm going to do that for us. Uh, the question right. also is I'm going to do that right now. So just bear with me. Let me move you guys around. It's always technology, right? I got to do stuff. Okay. Let me play this for you. And then we'll talk about it. And then after that, we'll get ready to take our test. Okay. So let me share my screen. Let me do this for you. There we go. Hello. Share screen. All right. There we go. Perfect. But the question also is, do your people have a purpose? And do you know what is their purpose? What are they fighting for? And are you helping them get there? Because winning with others lasts longer than winning by yourself. In every culture and religion in the world, there's some form of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. One day we we're all sitting around the company and, and talking to each other. What if we had a higher calling? What if we could take that golden rule up a notch? How could you do that? We started talking about, well, what if we did more for others than they did for us? What would that be called? That'd be called the, the platinum rule. I've been so fortunate to experience the platinum rule many times throughout my career. In fact, when I was a brand new agent in training, my RGA, who had a lot of MGAs and made a lot of money, decided to take two or three days out of their schedule and take me on a road trip and show me how to work that 12 to 9 schedule. They showed me how to collect referrals and this person made so much money, they didn't need to. They chose to and from that moment on, I knew that I was going to be successful at AO because I had leaders who would do whatever it took for me to be successful. I was on a road trip in Virginia and uh, you know you go to those areas where you don't have cell phone reception and all of a sudden I get back to an area where you get some bars and my phone's ringing off the hook and buzzing and text messages and all that stuff but the first actual phone call that came through um, was Mr. Altig and he's the person that told me to pull over the car and, and he's the one that actually told me that my brother had passed away and consequently in that time frame within maybe six hours miss the the company had flown me on a plane back to my family uh had uh completely wrapped their arms around me in that time
When you build an organization on the platinum rule, that's an organization that can inspire other people. Three years ago today, I was at negative 1,000 ALP for the year. I was literally on my way out. And uh, James called me every month, no matter what, and it was my friend. And uh, Rick called me, and Rob called me, and Nick called me, and they would invite me to things. Because they decided 10 years ago, when I was a kid, scared in the back, in a hotel, that that guy is gonna be good one day, I'm gonna make sure. I was kind of down on my luck. My money wasn't where I wanted it to be. I was a little bit tight financially. And I called a executive in our business, told them my situation it was emotional. And, uh, you know, the first words out of his mouth was, what bank do you work with and how can I help? Being recruited and hiring this company, people believed in us. They saw something in us that gives us our life here. And you think about it, when you do more for others in your work, you do more for others with your family, in your community, and just the people that you meet. When you do more for others than they do for you, you will truly be practicing the platinum rule and making a difference, not just in your business and in your family and the people that you meet, but you will be making a difference throughout the world. So do more for others than you would have them do for you. Basically, it's being selfless, right? And so tomorrow when we wrap this thing up, I'll give you my perspective on the entire thing, the entire opportunity, why I joined while I'm still here, and we'll talk that through. But I wanted people to understand what the platinum rule is and why it's so powerful here for us, at least here directly from Rick himself, who's the chairman of AO, which stands for I'll take organization. Hopefully you guys know that. All right. Uh, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. We don't have to talk about that now because what we need to do now is take our test. We need to understand, do we know enough about how to enter information in the EAP? And do we know enough in terms of underwriting? Again, this test is not a pass or fail. It's not graded. It's really for you to say to yourself, okay, can I get access to the information? And can I figure out, based on the circumstance that's presented to me, what choice should I make? That's all it is. And I've had people take two hours to do this test. I've had people take 30 minutes. Uh, the one person who took 10 minutes isn't with the company. They just said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, they didn't care, right? So don't do that. <clears throat> don't be that person. Try, right? Actually try to go through the process and understand what it takes uh, to answer the questions. The only thing you don't have access to is me or each other or another agent, whether it's your upline or not. This is all about you and trying to figure out the answer to the question based on the information that's available to you. Okay. So I don't expect you to get done in five minutes or even within 30. I expect you to take the time, look up the answer, do the best you can. In certain circumstances, you may actually have to start to create an application in order to see what happens so that way you can answer a question. So before you get started, this is your opportunity. You have a few minutes with me if you wish to ask me any question you want on EAP or on field underwriting, this is your time to do that. Barbara, I can't answer questions for people I can't see. <laughs> there we go, now I can see you. What can I do for you, Barbara? I'm sorry, I didn't know you couldn't see me. I'm sitting right here. Um, uh, my question was, so we can use any resource available to us, including like videos and stuff like that? Yeah, you can use any resources. The, the resources you cannot use are each other, another agent, your hierarchy, your upline, or me. Okay. So I want you to think of it from this standpoint. You're sitting with a client, there's no one with you, you get presented this circumstance, what is the correct answer? Okay. Okay. All right. Next question. Who has another question? No one has any question. You guys got this? You guys are like, I don't need that. Brooke, you're raising your hand, but I, okay, there you go. All right, Brooke, what can I do for you? 
Yeah. So um, is this on both the senior and the super combo where it says uh, under primary beneficiary complete fee only if applying for separate life policies? Yeah. I thought I don't. It is. OK. So is, is it always a separate life policy then? If for two well, people? Yeah, they're always going to be separate because uh, someone who's over eight or 18 or older, they have their own policy. Right, and they have to sign saying they acknowledge that somebody's taking on insurance on them. If they're underage, then uh, they don't sign, obviously, because they can't. But their parent would sign or their grandparent. Okay. Okay, so if it's a couple, it's still they have yeah. to have their own policies. Yep, they have to have their own policy. And that's, that's how correct. you pay out to the wife or to the husband. Got it. Well, they so you don't have to have if you're married or you're in a relationship, the other party doesn't have to have a policy in order to get paid out on your policy. Right. right if I yeah. decided to name Faith Webb as my beneficiary, we have no relationship, but I'm able to do that. Right. The thing I can't do is I can't take out insurance on Faith Webb and own the policy unless I have what? Insurable interest on Faith Webb. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Does that answer your question? I hope. It There's does. No yeah. I don't know why that was so caught me up for some reason. Oh, Brooke, I'm sure there's plenty of things that will catch you. Okay. Up. Calm down. Mike, you were <laughs> well, I had one issue uh, doing the homework for the EF uh, scenarios where mm -hmm. in the senior application, I selected an A71 policy for them but the system wouldn't allow me to specify which policy I was trying to select, but, you know, a family A71. Um, is that possibly just a glitch in training? Everything else Mike, is that happened fine. to me, I think. How old were they? I think it's because, yeah. How old were they, Mike? 78, 74. You can't give an A71 of somebody over 75, right? I read that somewhere afterwards. There you go. There Thank you go. You. That's what do it. So the, the tool helps you a lot because the rules are built in. Uh, Virginia, what can I do for you? Um, I, did you tell us at one point how to not make that movie come up? That play the video and whatever, and I keep getting stuck in it when I was trying to practice. Yeah, so in the very beginning, when you go to open up a, basically a new profile and you put in like Sam Sweet and you put my age and the state and all that, that screen, you do not click next. You take your cursor in the upper right-hand corner, there's a red little box and a white X, you click that to close that screen, and then yeah, you can go back and open it again, and then from that point on, you're safe, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Brooke, you just refused to put your hand up digitally, but you want to do this. So no, that, that was an accident. I was telling my son to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the hand. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, any other questions? I can't believe you. this is awesome. You guys are like fired up, ready to go. I love it. No questions. That's Eric Byers, what's the maximum amount of insurance that you can give to a senior? Uh, isn't it like 120000 No, but that's okay. Okay. So you have to know that. That's like a basic yeah. thing to know is how much insurance can you give to a senior? Where's the cutoff, right? So... Eric, you, no one else needs to answer this question. Eric, if you don't know the answer, where would you go to find the answer? Um, your um, new hire packet. Would oh. have so maybe everyone should have their new hire packet open. Where else could I go to get information about field underwriting, Eric? Um, it is underneath the help bar inside of the uh inside the e-app as well okay and where's a third place i can go somewhere in hp pro that i don't know where but i know there's you can also go to hp pro yeah and hp pro on the bottom when you go to the first screen instead of typing another and trying to do a presentation just go all the way to the bottom and you'll see um underwriting materials there it's an icon just click on it and remember it has that little tiny screen if you hit the down arrow you get a bunch of stuff or you can type in a condition 
and it will tell you what you can do. So that's pretty good, not bad. All right, now do I have any other questions or do you guys think you're gonna pass with flying colors? Melissa, you don't look confident. I don't know what questions you're gonna ask yet. So I don't know how confident I'm gonna be until I start looking at the questions. I feel confident enough until I start reading the questions and then I might go, uh oh. So, You're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Uh, Will, I'm you gotta, just fine, but well. <laughs> what, what can I do for you, Will? Yeah, where was the uh, new hire packet again? It uh, it's on the Google Drive, right? So I remember I sent that oh. thing, and I told yeah. you guys to download all the twenty one documents. Okay, yeah, I got. So it. if you didn't get a chance to do that, it's still on the Google Drive. You still have access to it, okay? That's that's the uh, first one, right? It is the very first attachment. Uh, it's zero one. Yeah, I've already got it. My bad. No, no worries. I mean, it's good to know where all the information is. Virginia Robertson, you're always a fountain of good questions. What questions do you have for us? Is it how to unmute yourself? <laughs> All right, Virginia, that's okay. You've taken up your allotment of questions for today. You know, you know I did notice something hmm. that is there. Why would you, this is probably off center, but why would you offer someone a term policy that ends at age 70, 65 or something? You wouldn't. Term 65. Why would you offer that? Though? That seems true. You wouldn't. But that's one of the offerings. No, it's an offering. So you can do a term policy for someone who's 10 years old or 20 or 30 or 40. What we're saying is, is that when it gets to 65, it'll cut off because we're not going to continue to have that risk because we know those people are closer to dying. So basically, anybody over 50, I'm not going to offer a term policy for. Uh, I'm going to move them all in the whole life. That That's me. But again, this is more about the art. You know what the limitation is on the 10-year RNC. Uh, apply it judiciously with your clients. Okay. And then it's and then a question that's not smart. I can't. Do you have to be in the HP Pro to find the help part there? Because I knew it was there, but I never did try to find it. So you have to be like in there working with a customer before you you can see no. that. Help. No, not at all. You don't have to be with the customer. But so let me show you. So you're, oops, let me show you the right screen. So we're here. So there, I'm, I'm gonna log into HP Pro, right? Mm -hmm. And once I log in, I'm gonna click on HP Pro. Now, if I was going to give a presentation with a customer, I'd put their name over here, or if I was gonna practice, I'd put other. Instead, what I'm gonna do is come down right here and see where it says underwriting manuals. When I click on that, remember I said it gives you that little screen? But if I hit the down arrow, I get the build chart, I get the flash sheet, and I can type in any particular condition. And if this person has prostate cancer, then I get this. That document that I'm looking at is the same information that was available in EAP under the underwriting manual. Mm -hmm. And I just have to read this and it tells me, oh, I got to require a two-year waiting period. So that's giving me information that tells me what I need to do. And then it says for Accidental Health, the hospital indemnity, which is the A34 to, or H34, most cases of prostate cancer are uninsurable for a minimum of 10 years. So if that question comes up, now you know how you got to the answer. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Awesome. That was a good question. I don't know why you thought it wasn't a good question. That was a good question. All right. Any other questions? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Here's what I need you to do is you're going to take the test. When you are done, you're just going to put a note in the chat saying, hey, I'm finished. That's all you have to do. Okay. Uh, and then you're free to go and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. If but I, I will not be here. My auditor will be here, but I will not. And the reason for that is I can't answer any of your questions, if that makes sense. I don't want you to feel like, hey, Sam, I, I'm trying to interpret this. What do you mean? I want you to answer the question as best you can with the knowledge and the resources you have available to you. And again, you can't ask each other. You can't ask a, uh, an agent and you can't ask me. 
Okay, this is purely on you to figure out, can I get this? And it just tells you where you're at. And then as you get better, you'll get more confident, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, everyone good. We know what we're doing, right? You're gonna do the test when you're done in the chat, you're gonna say I'm finished and you're free to go. And I will see you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. One last chance. Do I have a question from anybody? Okay. All right, everybody. I'm going to put it in the chat. It is actually in there now. I want to thank you for your time today. Hopefully you enjoyed watching Reco. Go ahead and take this test. And when you're done, put in the chat that, in fact, you are leaving. Other than that, I will see all of you tomorrow for one last day at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care and have a great night. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow, Sam. Take care. Thank you.